Hey surgical YouTubers, it's Kelly Slater here, the surgeon not the surfer. I'm a general surgeon in Queensland, Australia. In this video, we're going to talk about what to do when you come to the Green Slopes Private Hospital for your operation. Surgery is going to happen at Green Slopes Hospital. This is on Newdigate Street, Green Slopes in central Brisbane. On the morning of the operation, have someone bring you up the main driveway and you can either be dropped at the front entrance or there's plenty of paid parking in the multi-storey car park just to the left. Keep an eye on your watch and make sure you arrive on time. Enter the hospital through the car park doors or the main entrance. Walk just past the pharmacy and on the left is a set of elevators. These are the ones you need and they'll take you up to pre-op. Press the button for level one. And head up to the admissions area. You'll step out and you'll immediately be in the day of surgery lounge. Here you'll be greeted by one of our friendly executive staff who'll check your name, address and date of birth. We'll also get your next of kin details because I'll give them a phone call at the end of the operation. The recovery nurses will also give them a call when you're about to leave recovery and let them know which ward you're heading off to. Don't forget to bring your Medicare card and your health fund details and the executive staff will collect any excesses that are owing at the time of your admission. For an arranged operation, you mustn't have anything to eat or drink for six hours before. When you have an anaesthetic, all the muscles of your body relax and if you have food in your stomach, it can reflux back up into your mouth or even worse, can go in your lungs and produce a terrible pneumonia. It's really important that you stop eating at least six hours before the operation and we'll tell you this time. This includes all food and drink, except for the ones I'm going to speak about in a moment. Right up until two hours before your operation, you can drink clear fluids. This includes black coffee, black tea, water and apple juice. Basically anything you could read through. We might also give you two of these Dex drinks, which you need to drink two hours before the operation. It's so important that you don't have anything with milk in it or juice that you can't read through because this stays in your stomach. You can take your normal medications anytime you like, right up until the operation with a little sip of water. And for some medications, it's vitally important you don't miss them. It's also fine to brush your teeth on the morning of the operation and just spit the toothpaste out. Bring your valuables to the pre-op area with you and the nurses will take them just before you go to theatre and put them in a locker for you. They'll return them to you when you reach the recovery area. Make sure you don't bring anything of too much value. When it's coming close to being your turn, you'll be put in a pre-op room. Here you'll be asked to change out of all of your normal clothes, including your underpants and bra. Put on some glamorous paper undies that we give you, and it's important that you do this so we don't lose or mess up any of your clothes. And then you'll wait. There's a few things to do. You can watch some TV or read a book. Rest assured we're working hard to get to your case, and we're looking after the person before you as thoroughly as we'd look after you. You'll be measured up for a lovely pair of stockings that prevent you getting clots in the legs and you'll be asked to put on a gown that's forward facing and tied up at the back. You'll be given an ID band that will stay around your wrist for your entire hospital stay and a puffy hat will complete the look. When it's time, one of our lovely orderlies will take you around to the operating room and you'll go into the anaesthetic bay. If you have any false teeth with caps or crowns, please leave them in and we'll take them out right before you go to sleep and return them to you in recovery. This is where you'll say goodbye to your relatives and you won't see them again until you're back up on the ward after the operation. There are lots of other things that happen in the pre-op. Your height and weight will be checked and if you're over 100 kilos, you'll be put on a special hover mattress to help us move you around more easily. The next room you'll come to is the anaesthetic bay, which is just outside the operating theatre. You might hear us inside the operating theatre working on the previous patient. In this room you'll meet my anaesthetist and they'll put an intravenous line in your arm ready for the surgery. This is the only thing that will happen while you're still awake.
once again, several people will check your identity and ask you a series of questions to make sure we've got the right patient and to make sure you and we understand the operation that you're having done. This is your chance to ask any last minute questions. It's also really common while you're sitting in this room to feel like you have to go to the bathroom. And this is usually just nerves, but please let us know if you have to and we'll take you. When everything's ready, we'll wheel you into the operating room where you'll see a lot of things happening. There'll be a lot of people in the room and they're all there to look after you. The bed in the centre of the room is the operating table and we'll move you onto the table or we'll ask you to wiggle on yourself. There'll be several nurses in the corner of the operating theatre setting up the instruments for your operation. And at the head of the bed, there's an anaesthetic machine ready to put you off to sleep. Once you're on the operating table, we're going to hook you up to a whole lot of machines. You'll get an earthing pad put on one of your legs so we can use our electrocautery devices. You'll also get another layer of stockings. And these are like a complimentary massage to stop you getting clots in the legs. One leg will blow up and then the other and they actually feel pretty good. A blood pressure cuff will be round around your arm and the first time it blows up, it will be really tight. But don't worry, that will only happen for the first time. You'll have three sticky dots placed on your forehead and this tells the anaesthetist when you're asleep. A soft peg is placed on your finger and this lets us know how much oxygen is in your blood. When we're happy everything's ready, my anaesthetist will hook you up to some medicine called propofol and you'll feel it running into the drip in your arm. This might tingle for a bit, but it doesn't hurt you and the feeling will be gone when you wake up. Meanwhile, the anaesthetists will take over every aspect of your care and they'll stay with you through the entire operation. At first, they'll give you oxygen through a mask and then they'll use a special instrument called a laryngoscope to put a breathing tube between your vocal cords. This is the instrument we use to place it down under vision and then this is the tube that we place between your vocal cords and the cuff blows up so if you vomit it won't go into your lungs. This is the view the anaesthetist gets as the tube goes down between the vocal cords. Sometimes this is really hard and it's the most challenging part of the anaesthetist's job. Occasionally you'll wake up with a sore throat after the tube's been down. Try not to get too worried about it and it will be better in a couple of days. Now it's time for my team and I to get on with your operation and the next thing you know you'll be waking up in recovery like no time has passed. When you get to recovery your lovely nurse will look after your vital signs and then when time is ready you'll head up to the ward. You'll get your own private room and here's a little tour of the accommodation that you can expect at the hospital. Get your own table where all your meals are served and you have a bed controller with all the buttons and gadgets on for you to control your TV, your light and of course to call your nurse. There's a nice bedside table with lots of storage and a telephone. Powerpoints, no USBs. Maybe we could write that in a suggestion card. You get a chair for your guests to sit in, a little view out the window. Relatively big screen TV and this cupboard. Oh, there's nothing. In some woods, I believe you get fridges. You get a little safe to put your valuables in, just like in a hotel. And some hanging space with a couple of hangers and a spare pillow. Here, there's a table to put your bags on. Nice art, a board to introduce the nurses for the day. And over here there's a sink and inside 
There is soap, hand towels, gloves, vomit bags if you need them, and blueies and waste paper baskets. So pretty nicely appointed rooms. They're all private at the hospital here. And then we'll go into the ensuite bathroom. This is pretty nice because you don't have to share with any other patients. And we've got nice amenities, fluffy towel, soap, paper towel, sink, nice toilet, and a shower with some disabled equipment for you to sit on after your operation and have a nice shower with a handheld shower piece. So essentially, that's where you'll be spending this day in the hospital. If you have any other questions about your upcoming surgery and what to do, please refer to the booklet I give you when I see you in the office or call one of my friendly staff and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. See you soon. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check back frequently for new posts. If you like us, don't forget to subscribe.